Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis here with Sarah Powers. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Megan. How are you? I'm great because we are talking about something really fun, doing one of our favorite things, which is a more than mom episode where we pop into your feed on a Sunday to talk about, I don't know, completely inconsequential fluff, right? One of our favorite things to do. And this week we're actually talking about one of my favorite things to do, and that is giving and receiving gifts. So the best gifts we've ever gotten, plus some gift ideas or just some of our thoughts around both gift getting, which we both like to do and gift giving, which we both like to do. Yeah, I'm really excited about this, too. We're recording um, at the very beginning of December. I'm feeling pretty good about where I am this holiday season in terms of like doing a a lot of the shopping is done. And what that has made me think about is like almost like the fun stuff, the little things, maybe picking up some things for some girlfriends of mine or maybe asking for some things for myself. So it's almost like the opposite of that old oxygen mask. Thing, but it serves me. So I have taken care of all of the other people. And now it's time to think about what I want for the holidays. <laughs> you know, what's funny. I feel like I have been because we we've done a lot of gift content this year, um, which we've been talking about now since I don't know, like August, like we started yeah. really we got a real jump on it early this year. And I've been so immersed in like writing um, both and, and just thinking about um, just how things are with like supply chain issues and things Mm -hmm. like that because of some client work that I do that I've really been like in shopping mode for months and haven't actually done any shopping. Oh yeah. Just so so you have that like false sense of security. Like you think you've done it all, but you haven't actually done it. I've been on this for months, but I'm like, wait, the only thing I've bought (laughs) is my Chris, my kids Christmas jammies. Although this year I went all out and even got them um, monogrammed bathrobes. So I'm I'm taking it a step up this year, I will say. But like nothing else has been purchased. And now I'm like, okay, it's time for me to really get on, get on it. Yeah. So maybe we'll find this inspiring, like for the little gifts you're going to get. And for like all of the gifts I'm going to get, maybe we're going to get some inspiration out of this episode ourselves. Um, so let's start with a couple like warm up questions, Sarah. And you can go first on this one. Um, the first question is just in your opinion, what makes a gift great? Okay, well, I'm going to focus on gifts for me because I think that's kind of where we're circling around. Um, Like for when someone gives me a gift, I think the couple of things that might make it great. One would be something I wouldn't buy myself in a category that I'm already into. And so what I mean by that is it's not something I wouldn't buy myself because I'm not into mountain biking and I'd really like a mountain bike as a gift. That's not what I mean. I mean, I'm already into, say, coffee drinking, but I wouldn't splurge on like a $38 really nice insulated mug because I just probably wouldn't buy that for myself. So a slightly higher end like nod to something I love is always a good I feel like it, it, it strikes a good or it checks a good box for me because it says I see you and I see your hobbies and the things that you like, but I also know you might not indulge in this for yourself. It's not practical. It's maybe a little bit pricier. So that would be one thing. And then on a totally different note, something that can make a a gift great is like sort of a thoughtful way that it was procured or purchased. And so by that, I mean, maybe it came from a small Etsy shop that was not that not on my radar, but that's maybe meaningful to the buyer. Or maybe they went to their local market and picked out a piece of art I love receiving like handmade art and jewelry and stuff, even if it's not totally my style. If I know that the way it was purchased um, was meaningful to both the purchaser and the seller, it's like it comes preloaded with that meaning um, so much more than just big boxiness. I'm not opposed to big boxy, but that would just be a different two. Those are two different ways I think a gift could be really great. Yeah, I I love both of those and they play into... um my personal list, which, you know, the thought that went into it, um, like thinking about where I would like, a, a thing to have come from, I guess, or like, mm-hmm. like, or like looking at something and saying, this seems like something that is related to your values, your personality, just that feels really personal. Another thing to, that kind of ties into what you were saying about something that's in a category that you're already into, but isn't something you'd buy yourself is like an elevated version of something I would use all the time. So I am not opposed to useful gifts. I really like 
functional gifts. I like things I will use, um, but I want them to be a little more pretty or like mm. a little more high end or yep. like just, I might have the starter level version or like the base model. And mm-hmm. I love it when someone buys just the right accessory that turns that base model into something great or brings me up a level with that yes. purchase. And so it, that could be like a blender. Like it doesn't have to mm-hmm. be, you know, something super luxurious, but it's just like, you know, and I think that's pretty common actually with moms and women. It's not like we don't want anything that has a function. It's like right. we want things that have a function, but are like better than we'd buy ourselves on sale, you know, exactly <laughs> at the yes. big box store. Yeah, exactly. I think you articulated actually, that's exactly what I meant. Like the slightly nicer version of something I'm probably like using anyway, but I'm using the four year old target version. And and this is like, Ooh, I didn't even know I wanted an upgrade in my to go container or whatever. Right. Yeah. Another thing that came um, to mind for me is how well a gift fits my like right now lifestyle. Mm. So I will say I've gotten gifts over the years that were really cool in theory, but they weren't something I could actually use at that time. Um, because of maybe where I was with motherhood, like maybe it just was Mm -hmm. completely impractical or unlikely that I would use those. I don't know. Like one year I got a violin (laughs) and I had a, (laughs) I had Owen was a month old. You know what I mean? It was like, okay, that's awesome. I've always wanted a violin. I'm not going to learn how to play a violin right now. So it was like this beautiful thing that just sat there and almost mocked me in the corner. Like my, my arms were never empty. Like you Mm -hmm. need your arms to play a violin. Both of of them. It's not even a one hander. Yeah. yeah, You can't even (laughs) hold a baby in one hand. So it was a little depressing, honestly, because I felt bad that I wasn't using it and it was beautiful. And I just felt like, oh, I should be, that would be something that would be so cool for me to do right now. It's kind of like if someone had bought me like a bunch of camping equipment that I would take out on my own when I had like a two-year-old and a four-year-old and an infant. And like, there was no way that was, or I would never have had that, that mix of kids. So you know what I mean? Like, then I'm like, oh, I wish I could use that. I guess I can just look at it and like dream about it. Mm -hmm. But it would make me very impatient um, and sad. (laughs) So that, yeah, knowing where I'm at and like what, how, like how to get me into that category in a way that I can actually use it now um, is another thing that I think is like, makes a gift really great. I I think it is that like, I see you and I see your stage of life. Um, and, and again, this is not to like bash people who miss the mark because we all miss the mark on gift giving sometimes, but, um, I think it's feeling really seen when, when it, when you get something that fits your stage of life. Yeah. You know, it's also kind of a cliche, um, that moms get, I don't know, left out of getting great gifts or that we, (laughs) that we often just get terrible gifts, especially from spouses and partners. I'm just going to be, I know that's been Mm -hmm. a recurring conversation in our Facebook group and over the years from moms, I know. Um, but we've both gotten some great gifts from spouses and partners. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious if Sarah, you have any thoughts and I can go first on this one, actually. Um, about how to make it more likely that we will get the kind of gifts we want. And I guess I would say that I think sometimes we have to be more explicit than we'd like. And, Mm -hmm. and we've talked about this on the show before. Like we want the person we're with to understand like this is what, this is what you would want. And then Mm -hmm. to actually do all the things it takes to go out and get that thing. But it's almost like you have to separate in your mind between, do you want the person to think of it themselves Mm -hmm. or do you just want the thing? Because if what you really want is just to get good gifts, you might, you might find that you're much more satisfied if you like take it in hand and just be super duper clear about what you want. If Mm -hmm. what you really want is for your significant other to actually figure out what you want, that's a very different conversation. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, I totally agree. And I, I actually am sometimes not very good at remembering or thinking on the spot about what I would like. So I was going to say to make this easier, I, I don't do this, but I would like to having some way to capture throughout the year, like a screenshot folder on my phone or like in Instagram saves or some way to capture things that just catch my eye throughout the year. Because a lot of times with us, I do have a, a partner who would love to get a list actually. And I am sometimes the hang up or the bottleneck in forgetting like all these things. I, I do want things. But I do sometimes forget what I want. And the other thing I'll say, and this has been more of a challenge the last few years, um, I need to stop buying things for myself <laughs> when I need them starting yeah. in about September or October. I, um, 
I am a little impatient and I'm very efficient with my shopping. So it's like, okay, these earbuds are dead. I need a new pair. Put it on the list. Like I, I'm not like a shopper in the way, like, like retail therapy kind of way, but I also am pretty decisive and I will, if I need something, I will go out and get it. I'll find the one I want. I'll spot a sale and I will get it. And this year I have been really good. There have been some things I wanted and I put them on a Christmas list. And then I've just been like, dang, I really want a Kindle. Like I really need new earbuds. I'm like, nope, I put them on my Christmas list. I'm not going to buy them for myself. And that's made it a little more fun, honestly, because I have a reasonable amount of confidence that those things will be under the tree and that'll be really fun. So it's almost like delaying my own gratification. And I do that. I was laughing because man, I have had the same thing lately. And and part of this is because I've now not been, you know, married for, this is going to be my sixth I want to say my sixth Christmas single or since separate separating. Um, but I have been in a relationship, you know, last Christmas and now this coming up Christmas. And I'm just so used to just doing for myself. So like I decided I really wanted to learn a lot more about like loose leaf tea. Uh-huh. So one night I just went down this rabbit hole and was like, Ooh, here's a book about tea. Here's a book about tea. And I ordered them and bef- it was like, my finger was clicking, you know, <laughs> by and I'm like, no, I should have asked for that. Yeah. From Eric. But maybe he's got some other idea in mind that he wants to get me. So it's like we're still in that little dance. It's like the early relationship dance where it's like, would he rather just get me things that he wants to get me? And it's a surprise and I can just buy my own books. And you won't be disappointed that you didn't get tea books and you won't have to drop like passive aggressive hints about tea books. So, yeah, I'm not I'm definitely not saying we should never just buy ourselves what we need or want. That has been my particular problem because I do tend to just get what I need and move on. And so yeah. this fall in particular, there have, there are a couple key purchases I would have normally bought myself in like October. And instead I put them on a gift list and I'm yeah. just like that kid waiting yes. up for Christmas morning. And honestly, if you don't get them, you'll just go ahead and buy them on December exactly. 26th anyway. Right. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, I mean, I think that that's too the, it's like that balance, like the expectation and the hope but still knowing, like depending on your budget and how all that, you know what your budget is. And if you're married, you know what your family budget is. It's not, none of this is really that surprising. Like it's, it's all just, you know, it's like, who's going to be the one who's going to pick it out for you and hand it to you all wrapped up. Is it going to be you or is it going to be the, you know, the delivery drivers? Exactly. Exactly. uh, Yeah. I love it. Um, okay. Well, I, I also have like one little story to share about this because I do think that sometimes if your significant other is just a terrible gift giver, Um, it might help to get someone else in your life involved. I know my brother used to take me out shopping for Jenna all like every year. He's gotten actually really good at giving her gifts that she likes, but for a while it was pretty tragic in their household. Like, and when I say tragic, I mean like sad and she had very hurt feelings over it. And a couple of years he and I went shopping and I think he learned some stuff. Like, I think he was like, Oh, so I see. So I don't just go buy like drugstore shampoo and wrap it up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, you could see him. It's almost like he had like a little, like a little notebook out. He's taking us. Ah, hmm. Okay. So I don't buy her cooking oils. Ah, yes. Okay. So another example that I have of that is when I was early married, um, my now ex-husband who was actually a very, became a very good gift giver and he just likes to give gifts. Yeah. So he would just buy me whatever and wrap it up and give it to me as a gift. And I'd be like, cool, but like, thanks. Um, if I just have things that are wrapped, but aren't fun, it's not fun for me to unwrap an unfun thing. So it's like a huge bummer to unwrap something that is really just a basic tool or like right. something that's just mom life. Right. So, um, he was talking to my aunt Paula and they always had a great relationship. Um, and I think they actually still talk and he, <laughs> she asked him, I mean, the lore is, I wasn't in on this conversation, <laughs> but the tale has been told to me that she said, so what'd you get Megan for Christmas? And he said, oh, I got her um, a Swiffer. Like it was all <laughs> just the most basic stuff, like a Swiffer and a, I don't know, like a saucepan and like not really a nice saucepan, just like really, really basic things. And she said, no, you didn't. You didn't no, do you that. Didn't. No, you didn't. And he's like, what? And she said, that's not what you got her. You're going to put those things in your house because those are just things and you're going to go get her something else. And that year I got a really nice jewelry set. like something I had never gotten, like my first real grown up necklace and bracelet set, really nice perfume. I was like, what even just happened? It felt like we we got Aunt Paula. He got Aunt Paula. And we advanced like three levels in grown up gift giving in a single season. So, 
I didn't ask her to do that. I, I, at that time, had no idea what it meant to get good gifts. I was just like, yay, someone's giving me stuff. But I do appreciate that she took it in hand because after that, he was a stellar gift giver. So yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it just takes a little nudging from the right respected elder, perhaps. Yeah. And early intervention too, because that was, <laughs> that was early enough in your, yes. in your relationship. It, it, that would be hard or some hard habits to break, like maybe 20 years in, or I could just see it working differently. Not yeah. that, not that we can't all evolve. We, we can, but it's harder the longer you go. Right. And the longer, um, and the longer that sometimes I think moms just quietly swallow their disappointment on Christmas. Yeah. Um, if all the person ever sees your, you know, your partner ever sees is you pretending to mm, love it to and love never Swiffer. saying anything, yeah. <laughs> right. There's no, there's no incentive to get that brain wiring differently. So I just yeah. like to tell that story. I love it. Megan, today we're talking about our partner minted, which is one of my favorite places to shop for gifts. I feel like people think of holiday cards and maybe framed photos when they think of minted, but it's actually a marketplace for independent artists who create all kinds of things home decor, table linens, journals and stationery, and original art. Well, I'm glad you reminded me of this, Sarah, because I think I'm guilty of forgetting to check back in with Minted to see what kind of new, unique home accents and gifts they might have. They have accent furniture, tabletop decor, and all kinds of art. When you shop their site, you get to learn all about the original artists and their backgrounds and stories, almost like shopping an incredibly well-curated craft fair, but online. And listeners, when you use our special link, you can help support the Mom Hour and an independent artist and a really incredible company all at the same time. Visit themomhour.com slash minted, a special page on our site where we've both picked some minted products we're eyeing right now, plus some great deals for you. Again, that's themomhour.com slash minted. Sarah, we have been having so much fun lately in our Instagram subscriber community. You may have seen these popping up in your IG feed lately and wonder what it's all about. Well, Basically, it's just another way to connect with us. Subscribing is a great option for listeners who are avid Instagram users or maybe who just like consuming bonus content. We've been doing a special monthly bonus episode on IG Live, which is so fun because Instagram is so visual so we can actually show off some of the things we're talking about. Yeah, Megan. And one of the most fun things is we can actually open up a little group chat right after the live episode so subscribers can talk to each other and we can interact too. We've got people sharing their own photos and asking each other questions, which is really fun. If you want to join us in our Instagram subscriber community, it's really easy. Just head to the Mom Hours profile on Instagram. We're at the Mom Hour, and you'll see a subscribe button right there. Hopefully, we'll see you over there soon. Okay, Sarah, since it's the holiday season and, you know, we're thinking about ourselves in this episode, but we're also thinking about our kids to some degree. So let's start with um, talking about a gift that we remember from childhood, and then we can shift into the gifts that we've received as grown adults. So I'll start. Um, so it was Christmas when I was in fourth grade and I was a young fourth grader. I was eight. Um, so I was so still crazy to me, know, first of all. Yeah, it, it is. I was very young and we were, I was still very much playing with dolls and my little pony and my mom got me Megan and Sundance. I mean, Uh this is aging me, but like this was, it was the little girl, you know, writer and her pony Sundance. And I desperately wanted it because it had my name. Mm -hmm. Um, and I snooped and found it in my mom's closet and wrecked it for myself. And that was one of those lessons where like, it was so awkward because she kept asking me like, what do you really want for Christmas? And I really genuinely did want Megan and Sundance. But then I felt like I had to tell her I wanted Megan and Sundance Uh because I knew she'd bought it for me and I didn't want to like disappoint her. And so I'd say, I I just really want Megan and Sundance. And then she'd look all happy. And then I'd have to know that I was a deceiver. It was terrible. It was actually like kind of a terrible two to three week period where I, I ruined it for myself. And so it both it's memorable, both because it was a gift I genuinely wanted that I got that made me happy. But I also like wrecked the surprise and also like. I don't know. Like I felt like I was, I was lying to my mom, which made me mm-hmm. feel really bad. So mm-hmm. it was very much a mixed, a memorably mixed bag. Oh, <laughs> that is. Yeah. yeah. Well, the one that came up for me, I was also eight. I would have been almost nine. So it was the Christmas of third grade for me. And, um, I came out to our living room. It seemed like filled with furniture. So normally you come out like, and it's, there's something under the tree that's surprising, or maybe there's a, a pair of roller skates. Or when, when I was growing up, the magic 
uh, the magical gifts were unwrapped. So there was usually something that wasn't in wrapping paper that had been magically delivered in the night. But this was like, it felt like a room full of furniture. And so my parents had gotten me new bedroom furniture that matched and it was white wicker. So there was um, a desk and then a dresser with a vanity, like the mirror. And the vanity part had a couple of smaller drawers for little doodads. I mean, it, it, it just like ticked every box on my third grade self. It was mm-hmm. so pretty and matchy matchy. And probably I needed new bedroom furniture. I'm guessing like I was kind of overdue for some kind of bedroom furniture upgrade and they decided to do it for Christmas. But I think now looking back or looking at them as parents, if my math is right, if it was that Christmas of third grade, then they also had like a six month old in the house. They had their third baby. My sister would have been a baby. So they had their hands full. And I'm just thinking about the How do you drag in and assemble? I don't think they assembled. It wasn't like in the days of Ikea. It was probably delivered by, you know, the, the local furniture company or whatever. But then getting it into the living room overnight on Christmas Eve, I honestly, that's a bit more magical to me than even the magic itself. Yeah. And I did know that my parents had gifted that to me. So that was um, that was they got all the credit for that gift. And I'm glad they did because they deserve a lot. And that was the big that was the big wow that year. I love that. And you know what that shows you? Because I think a lot of us run into this kind of weird tension point between, I don't know, like September and December. I saw a really funny a meme going around the other day. And it was something like when you ask for toothpaste, when you tell your mom you're out of toothpaste yeah. in November <laughs> yeah. and she's like, yeah, but Christmas is coming or whatever. Yeah. There is that funny place where you're like, okay, so my kid really genuinely needs this thing that if it were March, I would just buy it for them. Right. Because why wouldn't I? Like they, they really need a new mattress. So they really need a new, whatever it is that they need. But they're like, but you know, Christmas is right around the corner. Yeah. So not only do I have this other huge expense, But also it's kind of weird to just be like loading up stuff. So I think what I love about that is if you needed it anyway, they still made it so super special. It was so special. And I had no idea that it was coming. So, well, that's giving me some ideas for my kids. And that's all I'll say about that in case they're listening. They're not listening, but whatever. You never (laughs) know, right? Okay. So let's now fast forward to our adult lives, um, which you can, you know, you can um, define that however you want, Sarah. But what has been the weirdest gift you've ever gotten. And I don't necessarily mean the worst, just the weirdest. Okay. Well, I had a little trouble with this one, but I do have a funny story that kind of fits in. My in-laws are very generous and love, love to buy clothes for both Brian and me. They do it less now that we have a bunch of kids and we're in our forties. But even when I was in my like late twenties, I would get very nice, you know, maybe a sweater or like an outfit for work from Banana Republic or something. Really nice clothing from my mother-in-law or my sister-in-law. And one year um, in all of the craziness of all the boxes arriving and the wrapping, somehow I unwrapped. I don't think it was wrapped under the tree. I think I opened it in like a box during the holiday season. A really nice um, raincoat. But when I say raincoat, it is just the outer shell. It's not like a waterproof winter jacket. It's like a true, it's not a slicker. It's like you'd get it at REI or something. Um, but it's it's one of those that's really for the waterproofness. Right. And what's funny is we were living in Arizona at the time. Doesn't rain very much. You do need a winter coat in Arizona, but more like a puffy parka type thing. You don't need a true raincoat. This felt like someone who goes on like outdoor rainy hikes or something. And I thought, oh, that is really weird. Is in my size? I think it was addressed to me, the label, but it wasn't wrapped inside. And I never asked. And no one ever said anything about whether or not I was supposed to receive a raincoat. (laughs) And it's still, this is probably 10 years ago. It's still in the closet. Allegra takes it on her outdoor because she goes to this very outdoorsy school. She takes it on her trip sometimes. I've worn it on the half a dozen times in the last five years that I've needed a raincoat. It's a great, I forget what brand it is, but it's a great coat. It just is really funny because I still to this day don't know if it was a mistake or if they did buy it for me and forgot to tell me or if it was meant for someone else. But and now it would be my so size. awkward. There's no way for you no. to bring it up. Yeah. Like, did you buy me a raincoat in 2013? <laughs> They're like, I don't um, know. <laughs> yeah, they have no idea because right. they, they love to buy them lots of presents. So, again, I don't know if that's weirdest, but it is kind of a funny story. And we still we still use it. It's it's handy. So I guess the lesson is everyone needs a good raincoat, even if you wear it like once a year for 10 years. Absolutely. And, you know, it's a Christmas mystery. So someday maybe the story will be like passed down. I don't know. I love it. Um, 
Well, I think for me, the one that came to mind, and I don't know, this is actually the weirdest, but it came to mind most immediately was like the last person I dated before Eric. Um, and I only dated this guy for like three weeks and he was a serious gift giver and I was in the middle of a move. So <laughs> he kept giving me stuff. And I was like, we've, first of all, we have not been dating long enough for you to be giving me stuff and stop it. I'm moving. <laughs> So <laughs> it was like, it's so much stuff. Like I'm looking around right now. Like he gave me this enormous um, humidifier that you have to put so much water in. It takes like half an hour to fill it. Like you have to keep making yeah. trips back and forth and back and forth. I don't know why I got that. He gave me a karaoke machine, wow. he, like so much stuff, but he had just gotten a bed, bath and beyond credit card, I think. And he got a whole bunch of like extra coupons. <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> so, and he was a marathon runner. So he was really into things for like elite athletes. And okay. he bought me one of those massage guns that has like all the heads. Mm -hmm. do, yes. Do Brian has it, one. Yeah. It looks like a gun. Like it's in a And they're, re, they can hurt you there. Yeah. Yes. We, actually, we actually have one because Brian's um, okay. trainer before the. Totally makes sense. But even you we would have one. Even we don't need one. But I do know what you mean. Yeah. So it's in like a case. It looks like a machine gun case uh -huh. or like something that in a movie <laughs> where you'd store the cash, uh, it's yes, like, it like that. It's very intense and they're heavy and, it's, yeah. and they're heavy and it's got, or it looks like a big, like drill. Like it looks, it's uh -huh. huge. And it has all these like foam heads. Yep. It's for elite athletes who yeah. have real soreness, yeah. like real musculature issues. And he gave it to me and I was like, he's like, and I got one too. And I'm looking at it thinking, I don't even know. Like, I don't want to take this out. I'm afraid of it. And then he's like, just make sure you don't use it on your bones. And then I was like, okay, I'm never going to take this out. So I finally gave it to a friend of mine who had gotten really into running. Cause he's like, yeah, you can really hurt yourself if you, yes, like you if can. you use it right directly, like on your shin bone or something, he's like, yeah, don't do that. And I was like, okay, well now I'm terrified. So no, thank you. It was just such a strangely inappropriate. It was a really nice of him. Yeah. But so inappropriate for the stage of dating. And also for me, like it had yeah. nothing to do with me at all. It was right. very, very odd. And I just remember thinking, well, I mean, I guess I could have milked <laughs> that a few more weeks. Who knows what I could have gotten? He maybe you would have landed on something good for you eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was one of the odder things. And I was like, thank you. Thanks. So really funny. That's and really I, funny. I feel, you know, it's a, it, the thought was very nice. Um, it was just strange. Love it. So next question, what was the first gift that made you feel like a real grown up lady? And I mean, I bet there were probably things in my twenties that I just can't remember now, but the one that popped out was my very first like totes profesh laptop bag. It was Kate Spade. Mm -hmm. I was in my late thirties. I had, or sorry, late twenties. I had just started going to conferences. Okay. Um, and so I really needed a bag that I could carry around a conference with my laptop in it and ha would have like, you know, room for other stuff, my notebook and all other mm -hmm. stuff. And that looked good. I think probably before that, cause I had, I actually went to a couple of conferences, like when I was 25, 26, maybe, I don't think I had like a really nice bag for my stuff. I don't remember that being right. part of the experience. And this one was bright pink and orange. And oh, it was I, just I have so seen this cute. bag. Yes. Maybe I used like it for a when long it was at time. the end of its reign. Yes. Yeah. It started to like, it got to the point where it started to peel like the, um, I don't even know, the stuff like on the, the railing, I mm -hmm. guess that is like, you know, the piping or whatever around yes. the edges that started to kind of peel off and got kind of gross. But yeah, you probably did see it. I used it for a long time and I just loved it. It made me feel super classy, like very mm -hmm. professional, very pulled together. I had never been into like designer bags. So that may have been the first like really designer bag that I had. Um, mm -hmm. And I just loved it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to second that. And m the one that came up for me was also um, a work bag, a laptop bag. I don't think it was a designer name, but it was from somewhere like a mall, a mall leather goods store, like that right. kind of thing. But it was red. And my favorite color is red. And I was about 24. But, well, it was before I had kids, but probably when I was early engaged or married. So 25, 26, I was working corporately at that point in an office and I wasn't expecting it. And it came from, again, from my very generous mother-in-law, who is a wonderful gift giver. And I wasn't, it, it wasn't on my list. And I, I don't think it was on my list, at least in my memory. So it was a surprise and it was so beautiful. Like I just remember opening that box and I'm just going to say that actually bags um, are such a nice gift. I can think of, as I started talking about that, I can think of other yeah. times where I've received 
um, some kind of nice wallet or nice Mm -hmm. purse. And and of course, someone needs to know your style, but there's something very um, generous about that. And it's exciting to open up. And um, it's also fun to shop for your own bags. But that was the one for me. But when you were talking, I also remembered that one time I got a business suit for Christmas, but it was my senior year of college. And my parents were thinking that pretty soon I'd be headed out on job interviews and what they didn't know or what I didn't even probably know, because it was Christmas of my senior year. And I really hadn't figured out or decided what I was doing after school yet as I decided to pursue dance. So the funny thing is that that was an Ann Taylor or Ann Taylor loft. It was really cute, like skirt and jacket. And I never wore it because I went literally like my job interviews were auditions for ballet companies and I didn't go into the workforce for several more years. And then I wore it. I wore a couple of times, but that was a real grown up lady gift that um, unintentionally missed the mark and not like right. not like in a bad way. I think even at the time I thought I might be going you know, out on job interviews soon, but I was not. Well, just to double back to what you said about bags being a great gift. I agree because I think they're one of those things like when you see a great gift or a great bag when you're like out in the wild. Mm -hmm. It's a precious moment because Mm -hmm. I'm very, very picky about bags Mm -hmm. and 95% of them disappoint me in some way, whether it's form or function. Seriously, you know, this is the person who's been using now for a year and a half just because I haven't found a better one yet. I don't like the person I'm using that much, but I just keep using it because the other ones I see have disappointed me. So I think if you see a truly special bag, um, and that could be like a canvas bag to carry Mm -hmm. your books in. It could be Mm -hmm. like, a beach bag, like their yes, bags are so practical and yet so cute and yes. can be when, the, when they're the right bag for you. So yeah. love that. Well, let's talk about Sarah, the best gift that was the beginning of a tradition or created even accidentally created a tradition for you. Ooh, you go I first love on that. this one. Well, um, a few years ago, I'm going to say Six, five, six years ago, my mom got both my sister and me a set of Spode Christmas china. And she, the first gift was the actual dinnerware sets enough for 12, which was like a really like a big start on a collection. And I had not thought of myself as someone who likes like a matching china set. Like we never use our wedding china. I actually kind of like a more like minimal eclectic look during the regular year. But it has brought so much joy to get out the Spode. And and if listeners, if you're not familiar, like the Spode Christmas tree is one of those kind of classic patterns that's existed for a long, long time. But then they'll the Christmas tree itself on the plates and on the mugs is always the same. But the design of the different pieces um, also kind of goes in and out of different fashion. So you can get some that are real frilly and have like, you know, scalloped edges and look more traditional. And then there's some more minimalist pieces, but they all have the Spode Christmas tree. And it has been so fun. So then after the, after getting the initial like dinnerware set, um, every year, my mom gifts my mom and my, or my sister and me, um, something from the Spode collection. So like last year it was a cookie jar and it's so pretty. Um, and once it was like salt and pepper shakers and I have started to buy myself little gifts, uh, from the collection. (laughs) Wait a second. (laughs) But are you doing that around Christmas time? I mean, I do it whenever I see it on sale because it's just, it's been so fun. And and you having, can't wait for your mom to buy you the whole set if she's pe- buying you one piece a year. No. And she was <laughs> yeah. irritated this year because she's like, now I don't know what you have. And I can't remember what I've given you guys. And now you've bought yourself a bunch. Not, <laughs> not really irritated. But um, that has been I never would have thought of myself as someone who loved a matching sort of traditional China pattern at Christmas time because everything else about me um, like aesthetically is much more like, you know, thrifted and antique and like mismatch. I I love all that, but I cannot tell you how much joy I get out of the Spode Christmas tree. And it's not, it's, it's here to stay. Like I will continue buying it forever and give it to my kids probably. I love that. I actually, you know, now that, uh, more than half of them are now adults and going out increasingly into the world and things like that. I'm thinking to myself, like, what could I do that would help them like set up housekeeping in a way, yeah. but also be something we can add to that would be fun. And part of the hard thing is I've got four boys and they don't really value that stuff the same mm-hmm. way. I don't want to be a cliche about it, but at least my two oldest boys, like they're very Spartan in yeah. the way they acquire things. Um, Isaac just moved out to Wyoming. We'll talk about that more in a different episode, but he literally took a couple sheets with him. And like, <laughs> I think that's it. I was talking to him yesterday and he, he said he was, 
on his computer. I'm like, well, what are you sitting on? He's like, yeah, I haven't really figured that out yet. He didn't bring anything with them. I was like, are you just sitting on the floor? He said, yeah, I'm just sitting on the floor. So anyway, I don't know how well China would go over yeah. with them now, but like something, there's gotta be mm-hmm. something. Well, maybe for me, it's the pajamas, right? That yeah. is the kind of, they'll wear those pajamas probably out in public for decades. And they so, don't even need a chair to sit in. <laughs> they don't even need a chair. <laughs> Um, okay. So the best gift that was the beginning of a tradition for me, the one that came to mind was the year, the first year I was married, my mom very wisely got me, um, a couple pieces of Christmas decor. And I think, I think that's because my mom just understood that like in our house growing up, Christmas decorating had always been a big thing and that Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have a lot to start with. I wouldn't have much. And my mother-in-law had some stuff out of her collection, but it wasn't stuff chosen for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so my mom gave me, um, a porcelain Mary. Um, so it's like the doll itself and, and there's a baby Jesus, although it's like an old baby Jesus. Like it's like a year old baby Jesus, but so it's not like the first <laughs> <Hold> Christmas. <on. laughs> it's like the second, like it's the Christmas that Mary is celebrating. Right. Not the, the one that slept through the first not one, the one where she's like in a stable, you know? Yeah. Um, so that one would have been hard for her to be like her hair to look good and stuff. So anyway, she's porcelain, but th- her gown is some kind of clothy thing. And oh, it's just cool. very, very pretty. And um, she also got me a wooden nativity scene that is like a puzzle. So oh. it's a, and they have those. I see those a lot out a lot now. I think I have seen something. So similar. they pop out like mm-hmm. it's like a the outline. Mm-hmm. But the one my mom, my mom gave me was really special because it was very heavy duty. Like it was mm-hmm. the ones I see out are often very kind of thin and they don't look, the wood doesn't look very high quality. This one was very heavy. Um, and those, I mean, if you look around any home I've lived in and I've lived in many for the last, you know, two plus decades, I always have like my religious Christmas table uh-huh. and then my secular Christmas table. And then other things get kind of scattered through the house where they fit. Um, that was like the beginning. That was my first two more like religious Christmas decorations. And so those were like the backbone of what eventually became that display. Mm -hmm. And so every year, those are the first things that I would unpack and put out. And then I kind of built around that other things. The nativity scene at some point went missing. I don't know where it went. And I, I have a really bad feeling that one of the times I moved, I must have maybe put some stuff, not in one of my typical red or green Rubbermaid containers. Mm -hmm. Maybe they like wound up in a box and didn't make the move. I don't, it's gone. It's been like three or four years now and I, it has not shown up and it made me really sad. Um, I do hope that I'll be able to find another one that had the same quality. Like I'd like to really buy one just like the one I had. So I have my eyes open for it, but, but it was like, even now without that, I still have all the other pieces that go with it. And it's nice. It makes me think of my mom every year and it just makes me really happy to put it out. So, um, yeah, so that's mine. So Sarah, let's now talk about the best experience gift we ever got. So, you know, tickets to a show or a trip yeah. or a outing. I'll go first. Like file this one under weird and unexpected and amazing and great. So um, probably seven years ago. So now my ex-husband, John, and my brother, John, um, surprised Jenna and I with tickets to go see Justin Timberlake. Now, Ooh. I have to like really take a few steps back to explain to you how unlikely this is. First of all, Jenna at that time was not getting blockbuster gifts like that. Like it would not have been on my, so I don't think my brother thought of this on his own. Again, Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say, I don't think that was probably his idea. I love Justin Timberlake, but I never, ever, ever, ever in a million jillion years would have bought myself tickets to go see Justin Timberlake. I just wouldn't, it wasn't on my radar. I might go, I might spend money on like a Broadway show, but yeah. like that concert wouldn't, which is what made it so awesome. And then it yeah. was so great that I got to go with my best friend and we got to go like, you know, get a hotel in the city. The whole thing was so cool. And I know it was expensive mm-hmm. and it was just one of those like wow gifts where I was yeah. like, never would have done that for myself. Wouldn't have been on my radar. Of course it was an amazing show. It was right when he had, um, I think it was the suit and tie. I think that's what it was called, suit and tie tour. But there was like a ton of, you know, bangers, as my kids would say, (laughs) on that album. And I think it was the 20, what's it called? The 2020 experience or something like that. I don't, it wasn't 2020, it was not the year, but it was, 
a really popular album and it had tons of um tons of hits on it and it was a great show he put on a great show had a whole band like they were um it was in one of those huge stadiums outside of chicago i can't think of the name of it lincoln center maybe and like he's on, on this platform with all of his dancers and it's going around we had nosebleed seats uh-huh. which were still extremely expensive but then it would like hover in front of you for oh five gosh. or six minutes and then they would dance and go crazy in front of you and you're like ah so oh it was my gosh. really cool and it was so different so that was mine how about yours that is that's such a good one Well, mine was the first Christmas we lived in Orange County after a decade in Arizona. So we had moved away in August. So this is just a few months later at Christmas. And Brian had planned a trip for me to fly back to Phoenix um, and go shopping because I was really needing clothes. um, And he knew that. So he planned a trip for me to fly back to Phoenix, stay with one of my close friends there, have dinner with all the girlfriends, and then shop the next day and fly home. I want to say it was just an overnight because that flight's pretty short. But I think what made it such a cool, well, two things made it really cool. One, he had really done all of the planning. Nothing was left to me. The girls in Arizona knew I was coming. He had my overnight arranged at my friend Stacy's. He had uh, one of the girls had made a dinner reservation, but he had started all that. They all had like made childcare arrangements so that we could all spend the day shopping together. Like every detail had been thought through. And the other part that made it really cool is it was actually coming up very soon. So it was not only such a big surprise, but sometimes when you get those trips or tickets or something, it's like, oh, we're going in, you know, August or like in April or whatever. This had been booked and paid for and planned. And wow. I think I went on like January 2nd or something. So it was about a week away. So it was like, oh, I, I opened love up this that. You card. didn't have to wait. No, yeah. it was over that. And keep in mind, Violet was less than two. Well, she's a January birthday. So she was just about to turn two. So I was still coming out of that haze of like, you know, like not leaving my kids a lot. So even a one night away and a one night to reunite with my friends who I had just moved away from. It was just like it it combined all the things. It was thoughtful, but it was also logistically well thought out. I wouldn't have wanted to go away for a, a very long time or go very far because my kids were really little. So it was just really well thought through and it was really, really fun. And it came up. It was like next week you're doing this. You're going to Phoenix next week. It was it was like a, for sure, like a top gift. I love that. And I love like being I love the the, the lack of lag time. Yeah. Um, I feel like my concert was the same. It was like a couple weeks later. Yeah. There's no time to even think about it or be like, oh, or lose or lose enthusiasm. It was like the enthusiasm right. rode right through yeah. from the moment I opened it until the moment I went. So yeah. I love that. I love it too. So Megan, I was just looking at some analytics on the most popular blog posts on the momhour.com. Do you have any guesses what they are? Uh, Sarah, I am. I am stumped. Tell me. Okay. Well, I was laughing because two of the most popular blog posts are about flying on airplanes with babies and toddlers. And then right beneath that was another one about how to keep kids entertained on long road trips. So I'm guessing moms in our community might have some uh, travel coming up. (laughs) So a few other posts getting a lot of traffic. There's one I wrote about how to plan activities and structure your days at home with little kids. Another one about getting kids ready for kindergarten and a breastfeeding product guide. It's almost like we can see what questions and challenges moms are having just by looking at these blog post analytics. I love it. And Sarah, I know that most of our listeners find us through the podcast first. That's definitely the core of our business. But I do hope people check out the blog, too, because some topics really just work well in an article. And we have so many talented writers on our team who share their expertise on everything from gift guides to potty training tips. So the best way not to miss a blog post is actually to sign up for our email newsletter. We don't spam you with tons of email, but we send a really concise digest every two weeks with the posts you might enjoy on the blog. Click the link in the show notes now to sign up or head to themomhour.com slash news. Megan, we love hearing from our listeners who say they feel like they know us and we're their friends because the sentiment really does go both ways. And for our friends who want to share their love for the show, we have a shop. Yes, it's true. If you go to themomhour.com and click on shop in the top bar, you'll find shirts, mugs, and even the cutest little onesies for sale. And we know that some of you got or gave the Mom Hour merch at the holidays. So if you do own any of our gear, we would love to see a picture of you. Go ahead and post a picture on social media and tag us in it. We'd love it. Oh, yeah, that would be so fun to see. And I love thinking of us all over the country and the world drinking out of our Mom Hour mugs. So again, you can find that link right on the homepage of our website at themomhour.com or go directly to themomhour.com slash shop. 
Okay, Sarah. So it's been really fun talking about some of our favorite gifts that we've gotten over the years and some that have just been weird. Um, But I wonder now what your favorite gifts to give are. And you go first, but you can be a little vague about that if you want, or, um, or maybe there's like literally a specific gift that you like to give. Okay. Um, well, again, I'm going to stick to kind of the moms and the ladies in my life. Um, but flip it around from myself to others. Uh, well, everyone's heard me talk about those slippers that I are from J crew factory that I heard about from Ashley Gad internet, famous slippers. Um, They go on sale for 20 bucks several times a year. And I did, in fact, I have bought them for fellow ladies in my life the last two Christmases. I also bought some for myself this year. Um, So that is it has become in the last few years, it has become a total go to gift to give. Um, And also, you can't have too many slippers. I I actually get myself a new pair every year because I wear them constantly and they're 20 bucks. I would say um, these days, the last couple of years, anything from Etsy or minted like shopping artisan is really fun for me. And going back to when I talked about the gifts I like to get, it's kind of the same with the giving, the giving through like uh, a maker or an artisan is really fun. So I have really enjoyed that. Um, And then there is a to go coffee mug, which I hinted at earlier, and I'm going to link it in the show notes because I am not looking at the brand name right now. It's not that, you know, that cork corksicle brand. Yeah. Megan. Do you see that? Okay. It's, yeah. I would say it's on par or like a competitor of theirs. You see it in at like kind of natural or yoga E type shops, but it's not that brand. It's another one. It's and not hydro flask. Nope. It's not hydro flask. It's a little like hippier okay. <laughs> and like, um, I don't know. It's just, it's not hydro flask. Uh, I got it for Brian for maybe his birthday last year and I have been coveting it ever since. And I will say that's a through line for me with gifting is I often give people things that I kind of secretly want myself and it's not a bad strategy. I feel like if my sister and I do that a lot, my mom and I do that a lot. If you give something, you're like, I saw this and I wanted it. So I bought it for you because I feel like if I wanted it so much, then it looks pretty good. And that's a good, that tends to be a good strategy um, for gifting for me. I love that. Well, yes, I agree. Like, um, sometimes there's a thing that you wish someone would give you. So you give it to others. Sometimes there's a thing that you've used and you loved it. And then you like almost turn into an ambassador for that thing. Like you with the slippers. slippers. Um, that's definitely, that's a very satisfying way of giving gifts. I think for me too, when I'm out and I just see something like, wow, this is something that just is totally for this human being in my life. That feels really good. Now that doesn't happen every year for every person on my list, right? Right. Like sometimes those are like kind of um, elusive experiences that you see something that's that perfect and it's also totally unique and different. And so when that happens, I'm very excited, but I don't expect it to happen very often. Right. And when it does happen, it does not matter the time of year, I will purchase that thing and then hope I don't lose it or forget about it in the meantime, (laughs) or I'll find a reason to give it to them. It may be not, maybe I don't wait for Christmas because I have bad luck with remembering that I bought those things later. But I have really loved giving homemade gifts um, the last few years. Like I gave all that embroidery last year, Sarah, you and I did that really fun Instagram live about my embroidery projects. I gave probably 15 different embroidered things away last year. That was Mm -hmm. really fun. I made um, bath salts and lip balm last year. In the past, I've made vanilla extract. I've made all kinds of fun stuff. And when I have the wherewithal to actually make something, I think people would like to use like mm-hmm. something that's actually cool and useful and not just like, I don't know. I made this just to make something. Yeah. There's a difference in my mind. Yes. Um, that feels really good. So those are my favorite kinds of gifts to give. I love it. Well, we also have a gift guide just for moms or the fellow ladies in your life on our blog. It's called Moms 2021 Holiday Wish List. And we will link to it in the show notes. It's over on the blog. You can also get to it from our holiday headquarters page. But Megan, it might be kind of fun to go through that gift guide or just give a glance at it ourselves and pull out a couple of the ideas from that gift guide because this was put together by our contributor team. Um, and the the prompt was, what are you hoping to get this year for Christmas? So these gifts are actually what the moms on our contributor team are hoping that will be under the tree for them this year. So they are, um, I guess, mom tested ideas and Mm -hmm. I hope everybody does get them, but let's, um, let's play with some ideas from this list. Is there anything on this list you saw that you would personally love to get this year or any year? There were many things on the list (laughs) that I thought were genius. Um, the one that stood out the most to me was the Dyson hair dryer. And I can't remember which um, contributor it was that suggested that, 
But I was first of all thinking, okay, Dyson has an amazing reputation and hair dryers are very important. Uh huh. Um, and so like the two of those things together, like I spend way too much time drying my hair. I will purposely not do an activity like cooking onions <laughs> that I know is going to make my hair stink if I have to wash my hair too close to the last time I wash my hair because I have to dry it again. And, you know, we both have like that kind of curly wavy hair that just yeah. doesn't, it's not the kind of curls that look awesome. Uh, like, unless you do something very specific. To yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes. they're unruly and just kind of like random and erratic. And so apparently this Dyson hair dryer cuts your drying time like in half. And I saw that and thought that's just exa exact example of the elevated everyday tool mm -hmm. that can make a gift so yes. great. Yes. So what about you? Well, I am going to shout out too quickly because one of them, it was actually my contribution. Like I contributed this idea to the gift guide because I actually want this this year. And it's so funny, Megan, because it's another bag and it's a travel backpack that looks cute and will hold my laptop. And how long have I been coveting your backpack oh, that you like yeah. four years probably? Yeah. And have I gotten myself one? No, I have not. And I am talking about like a backpack style instead of a traditional laptop bag. And so I just Googled around actually. And I found this one from CalPAC that had really good reviews. It's really cute. Um, and it will fit my, cause I have a 15 inch MacBook, which is pretty big. And so I read some reviews. It's going to fit my exact laptop and I put it on my list. And so that is, you can, you can all go look at it. It's linked up, but again, with the work bags. But then I also loved that Joanne uh, from our team asked for gift cards to local businesses. And that is another thing. If I opened yeah. up, I don't generally love getting gift cards. I'll say, I will say, but if I got gift cards to local businesses in my local town, I would think that was both really thoughtful and I'd be genuinely excited to go use them because that's just something I love. The difference between getting, you know, a gift card to a business in your local community and say like a Best Buy gift card or like right. not to slam Best Buy, whatever. I'm just throwing that out there as one of the retailers that you see when yeah. you're at the grocery store and there's mm -hmm. that that like little end cap with all the different things you can get. It's like Olive Garden and Best Buy or whatever. Right. There, you could think of that yourself. Like if you have something you want to buy from one of those places, or if you really feel like going and getting some like salads and endless breadsticks, you know, those things are there. Right. The cool thing about getting gift cards from your local community is a, it's really helping that business get, you know, like through like that cash flow is very important to them. Yes. A, and B, yes. it might tell you about something you don't already know about, or you've just never thought to check out. So, right even small towns have a shop or two that you probably just don't think to pop into. And if someone gives you a gift card, now you've got a really good reason to do that. So I love that too. I actually had, I, I waffled about putting that one on my list too, Sarah, but I'm glad that you did. Cause uh, I will say, Oh, I just looked up. It was Joanna Martin. Um, mm -hmm. Who's at cafe do Martin on Instagram. She was the one who suggested the Dyson hair dryer. Yeah. And I, I hope that I get it. Um, and I also wanted to make a quick, quick, quick mention that I actually replaced my old travel backpack with a new travel backpack. So now I have a different one too. Do you like it? Is it a good one? Yeah, I do. We should do a whole episode about bags very soon. I yeah, think. we actually have before, but it's been a while. Oh. <laughs> Shoot. I think we have two. We have what? one about what's, yeah, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> listeners back me up. We have one about the bags themselves. And then we have another one about like what's in our bag. I remember we, the like, one about what's in our bag. I do no, not we remember definitely the one about have. The it's bags really old. Ourselves. Okay. Well, we need a refresh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. Okay. Well, let's talk about from this list. Is there anything that you would love to gift or that gave you an idea for um, like what would make a good gift? And I will go first. Katie on our team says she's obsessed with fragrance, but already has way too many candles. So she's asking for this splurge worthy spray to spritz on sheets. So it's a fragrance spray um, and it's, it looks really like lovely and luscious and high end. And I, I actually was not familiar with like this type of a fragrance spray, I guess that for your linens and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would both love to give and get something like that just because it's a, like you said, the elevated ordinary or something that you're not going to maybe pick up for yourself. I think that would make a great gift. Sarah, I am literally texting you a picture right now um, that I am taking next to my bed at this very moment, but it is a linen spray. And when okay. I saw that contribution from Katie, the same thought, because okay. I love scents of all sorts. I think linen sprays are up there with one of the most luxurious things that you can get. Like it just, yeah. who has like, 
delicious perfume to spray on their sheets. It's like right. being royalty or something. Yeah. So that one was high on my list too. But the one I actually put down that I, I just feel like now it's almost an obligation. <laughs> I need to give some of those J crew slippers. I don't even have any, but just to become part of this like sisterhood of the traveling sis, like slippers, mm-hmm. I need mm-hmm. to buy a few pair and send them to someone, maybe just a okay. random person. I will I let you know even... <laughs> when they're on sale next time, because yeah. it's $19 when they go on sale, they have cute colors and you want, they don't come in half sizes and you want to size up. So if you're a half size size up, or even if you're like unsure between two sizes, size up and okay. they will make your feet so happy. So, okay. Well, I can't wait to eventually get some for other people and maybe myself too. <laughs> well, we have talked a lot about shopping small and small businesses today. And I think that's a shared value with a lot of our community. So don't forget before we wrap uh, to check out the small business boutique that we have up at the momhour.com slash shop. That is a collection of small businesses from within our community that we have curated and put together for you. So you have an easy place to check out small businesses owned by members of this community. So again, that's at the momhour.com slash shop. And of course we will link to this gift guide and our other gift guides and our other episodes about gift giving and all of that in the show notes, which should be just right wherever you are listening right now. Yeah. And Tuesday we're back with, um, kind of an update on our old we hate fun and we're coming back with some some I don't know well organized orneriness is that like a good way to put it Sarah I mean it will get ornery I have a feeling yeah 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 yeah. but we're just talking about things that um are are sold to us as being fun to do with kids but we moms know better we don't we know better yeah (laughs) they are they are not (laughs) yeah so we will be back with that episode on Tuesday talk to you soon (laughs) 